Hey there, YouTubers. Right, this is the 5 CPU cooler shootout featuring the i9-12900 on an Asus Prime Z690P motherboard with DDR5 RAM at 4800 megahertz. Now, previously I did a 4 CPU one. Uh, we actually showed all the benchmarks. This video, you don't get to see the benchmarks. This is talking about the different coolers and then the chart. That other video, unfortunately, the audio on the comparison chart didn't, uh, didn't work out. So... I didn't get a chance in that video to do the VTrue V5. That was something else I wanted to add to it. That was a little disappointing, but at the time there was no LGA 1700 kit available. One of the differences in this video is all of the CPUs except the VTrue used uh, Arctic, um, excuse me, the Intel cooler used the supplied thermal paste. The ID cooling used Arctic thermal paste. The Vitru V5 used their own Vitru thermal paste. And then the Noctua's, I used Arctic thermal paste on those. So um, whether that factors in this, another story. Obviously, the Arctic is probably going to be the best thermal paste out of the, the ones we used, all right? The test, not really the most scientific. Uh, you know, to make this test better, we do multiple iterations. Probably also use the same thermal paste across the board. What did I do for a test? Well, first thing basically was go inside the BIOS and the motherboard. Let this thing hit steady state. And so after a few minutes, basically this temperature doesn't change. There isn't a whole lot going on in the motherboard, right? So you're getting a CPU at low wattage and um, getting an idea of what the temperature is there. Now, we did two, two, get two temperature readings. One was with the standard speed of the fan. The other was full speed, all right? So you see that. XTU. This provides a highest CPU temperature. I did not bother with the maximum processor frequency. So we did record the temperature and we did record the benchmark. Now the benchmarks there are just because it's really one of those things where what I got for benchmark scores was, was disappointing and you'll, you'll see that in a little bit. Now the other videos, you can see this whole logging thing and some of the videos I actually show the power that that this thing used, okay? So, CPU was the i9-12900. You can see this just came out recently. The price, I overpaid. I paid $550 for it, $555. It's going to be a while until they drop down, but 16 cores, 8 performance, 8 efficient cores, 24 total threads. With the max turbo frequency 5.1, this has the potential to get really hot, right? C processor base power 65, maximum turbo power 202. Now, this is uh, basically PL1 and PL2 for default. You'll find that I did a test later where we had the default settings and then we went unlimited. All right, what does that do? Well, it uses more power and it gets a lot hotter. So when you do that, you need an even better CPU cooler. Does that really matter for gaming? Not necessarily, but it does really help for a high multi-core score. Oops. So, what came stock with the i9-12900? This Intel Laminar RH1 stock CPU cooler. For the sake of uh, the video, I went ahead and said it was 103 for the basically the diameter of the fan. Whether that's accurate or not, uh, eventually I'll get out there or tape measure and measure it. But uh, this is represents the smallest fan in the video, okay? Some of the other information about this you can find here. This comes free with only the i9-12900 and the i9-12900F. Currently, you cannot get this from Intel for any other CPUs. Uh, you may be able to find it on eBay. Hell, you may find mine on eBay at some point. Pretty cool CPU cooler. I probably, you know, hold on to mine for a little while till I, uh, unless I get some good money for it, right? If I can get 50 bucks for that thing, it's gone. 
This CPU cooler, in my opinion, is worthy of an i5 or less, okay? I don't think it's up to the job with the i7, and you'll see it's definitely not up to the job of working with the i9. So, oh, what do we see here? Uh, da, da, heat sink, yeah. So I, every one of these, the heat sink base is going to be copper. Now, next up we have the ID Cooling SC214 XT 120mm CPU cooler. $20. This is the cheapest. It has, what does it have? Four pipes on it? I think it has four pipes. Yeah, four heat pipes, ARGB. It's, uh, you know, a bargain, folks. It's, uh, you know, the Vitru V5 back in the day was 20 bucks, And it's gone up in price, probably because it got popular. I expect this one to get really popular. Uh, if somebody actually watches this video, you know, more than, let's say more than 60 people watch this. If we get thousands of people to watch this, this will become more popular. All right. Vitru V5. Um, I almost like to say I helped these guys get a little more famous, right? One of my most popular videos featured these guys. One of the videos, at least on this channel, that uh, I did, I got really good monetization from was this. A lot of people search for this CPU cooler. And that, you know, if you know anything about YouTube's monetization, that is telling you that you've, you've got a solid... Um, kind of a rock star for your channel right when you get something like this now this guy um you see here listed 150 watt tdp that's you know should be good for most cpus right what it's not really meant for is an i9 12900 it's not even fair that i'm using the i9 12900 with this because you saw uh or you will see the maximum power that gets used with this is higher than 150 what else is there about this ARGB? And uh, yeah, I paid 20 bucks for mine. I had to buy a kit. That kit cost me an additional eight dollars. So 28 bucks uh, is what my total cost is. But you see now 35, and it comes with LGA 1700. Next up, Noctua NHU 12S Redux. 50 dollars for this. This, you know, honestly, in my opinion, originally was uh, one of my big recommendations, right? $50 for this. I'd still recommend it. Quiet, very well built, right? No doubt about Noctua's quality. Nobody can knock that. This one is the gray one, uh, the Redux model, which is a cheaper one. I mean, it looks better than the other one, but I have yet to sit down and compare the my NHU12S, the regular one, the black and tan, or brown and tan, to this one. You see what the uh, the fan speed is there. Now, this guy, I've used it with quite a few CPUs. Is this up to the task of an i9-12900? Eh, you'll find out. Then you've got one of my personal favorites, Noctua NHU14S. There are some CPU coolers out there that probably could do a better job than this. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, I don't have the brackets to test it yet, but uh, eventually we might do the Vitru V6 Pro uh, and the Deepcool uh, AS500 or AS500 Plus. Uh, I don't believe the AS500 is going to be better, but the AS500 Plus might be, uh, and it's a little cheaper. So we'll see. But overall, quality of this is, you know, better than any of those that I've mentioned. So $80 for this. I paid $69, and then the second one I bought on eBay, I got for like $40. Bucks. But uh, I had to buy the kit, and I did get Noctua to send me one kit. All right, comparison chart. Now, you see the name across the top. You see the size. Okay, obviously, we already talked about it, but it goes from 103 millimeters all the way up to 140. Price, we've already talked about that as well. Now, talking about the BIOS, okay, temperature reading was done 
inside the BIOS at steady state. And so the RH1 laminar using the included thermal paste, okay, 48 to 49 degrees. So why do I have two temperatures on there? It basically is flickering back and forth. Replace that with the SE214 XT using Arctic thermal paste. And I have to find the bottle, the tube, to figure out exact model, but significant reduction in temperature, right? Replace that Vitru V5 using their thermal paste, 34 degrees. Replace it again, NHU 12S, 33 degrees Celsius. And then finally, our lowest temperature, the NHU 14S. All right, as you would kind of expect. Um, that the bigger one would be better. You would expect the Noctua 120 millimeter to be better than the other 120s. And if you know Intel stock coolers, you would expect that to be the worst, right? So that's how it's playing out so far. Turning on the, the speed to high. Once again, still in the BIOS. Significant drop in RH1 laminar. 41 to 42 degrees, folks. That is an amazing difference. I don't know the difference in the RPM. I should, maybe one day I'll figure that out for y'all. SC214, that dropped 1 to 2 degrees. The Vitru V5, I don't know why, folks, but it stayed the same speed. Um, go figure. NHU12S, we saw a 1 to 2 degree temperature drop. And then the NHU14S, barely any change, okay? It went from flickering between 32 and 33 to staying at 32. Now, next up, XTU default. So it doesn't matter what CPU cooler I put on here, folks. We get power limit throttling, right? And the CPU cooler doesn't matter. It is the settings on this thing that matter. So... One of the things that Intel recommends that you do to get rid of power limit throttling is to, there's three things they recommend, but the one that really matters is to adjust power limits. Now you could go in there and tinker around with it, but what I always do is go to unlimited, okay? So in this case though, this represents default settings. PL1, 65 watts, PL2, 202. So we ran the XTU benchmark, which you saw. The RH1 laminar, boom, 100 degrees Celsius, right? So not only was it power limit throttling, but it was thermal limit throttling. Now, if this was a video game, you would be like, oh my God, my frame rates have dropped like crazy. However, this is a benchmark. Um, it should affect the score, right? You would think the score would be affected. We'll find out in a second. SC214 XT, 92 degrees Celsius. So maintaining that 8 degree temperature difference, right? And for 20 bucks, for a lot of you, this may be all you need. Vitru V5, somewhat outdone by the SC214 XT. Now, could this be the thermal paste that did it in? I like to think it probably was. I didn't like this first one, so I did it again, and we got 93, okay? Didn't do this one a second time. Who knows what we'd have got. At this point, I'd already checked, changed the CPU cooler out. And as of right now, folks, this is the CPU cooler that is on the i9-12900. So NHU12S Redux, 83. So for $50, you get almost 10 degree drop on any of these, okay? and almost 20 degrees off the stock cooler. NHU14S, boom, drops it down another four degrees Celsius. Now, if I had, and I do, I've got uh, three better Noctuas I could have thrown at this. Plus, I could have made the NHU14S a plus model, which doesn't really exist, but basically that means it has two fans on it. Could have done that with the Redux model as well. Um, if I use my better Noctuas, and eventually I will. This should have dropped probably into the 75 or less category, okay? 
benchmark score. This is just crazy. Uh, not the hottest temperature, but, you know, second hottest. and gets the highest score. Go figure. Best cooling, right? And it's got the worst scores. So what does that tell you? Uh, for whatever reason, folks, thermal limit throttling over here did not matter. Power limit throttling, you know, obviously came into play, or it should have came into play. But, uh, yeah, this, this makes you almost want to throw these out. Makes you want to do these like 10 times and, and see how, how far the scores are out there. So what does that tell me, folks, that Intel's X2 benchmark is garbage, right? I probably should have used Cinebench R23. Now, I will tell you, had I used Cinebench R23 and its scores are available, I've done these videos. This was the worst score, and as you go up, the score gets better, score gets better. Haven't done it with this one, but score gets better, boom, highest score. Okay, that's how it would have worked with Cinebench. Next, we took XTU and we set power limits to unlimited. So PL1 unlimited, PL2 unlimited. 216 watts, folks, is the highest recorded power usage for the CPU, okay? I don't remember what this was. It was closer to 65 watts, all right? So what does that tell you? You should expect the temperatures to get a hell of a lot hotter. And guess what? They do. All right, so RH1 laminar, thermal throttled already. The SC214 XT, go figure this, it dropped a, temp, a one degree. I do not know how or why, but the Vitru, one score dropped to 94, and then on the other, it thermal limit throttled. Uh, out of these two, which do I find to be more accurate? Probably this one, okay, because... It should have been hotter. Definitely no doubt. The NHU-12S Redux went up 2 degrees. As well as the NHU-14S went up 2 degrees. Scores. Now this doesn't make any sense. The highest scores were with the Vitru V5 and the NHU-12S. These are the highest scores anywhere on here, okay? The lowest score... No. Well, low score was also the Vitru V5. And then the other low score was the NHU14S. So the fact that this one... This did not thermal limit throttle or power limit throttle, right? Neither did this. This guy, one out of two, it did. This guy didn't. And this guy definitely did. Um... In this score, you know, you see what you expect. The score should have got worse, and it did. Over here, the score, this temperature should have probably been higher, and the score should have been worse. These guys, the score should have been, the temp should have been higher, and the score should have been worse. So, there you go, folks. Um, now, i9-12900. Do I recommend any of these CPU coolers with this? I would say the Noctua's. Are good enough right if you need to do serious benchmarks and you're gonna set power limits all the way up yeah maybe you want the um, the even better models right there's dual tower single fan there's a dual tower dual fan right and you can even put three fans on it if you want now what does that get you well um, it doesn't really matter here I'm not sure that XTU is gonna do anything but if you ran Cinebench, you may achieve the highest scores because guess what? All of these CPU coolers thermal limit throttled using Cinebench R23. So what does that tell you? If you could keep that under control, that uh, you know potentially you would end up with a higher benchmark on R23. I'll find out eventually, you know. I don't think that the VRMs are all that bad on this motherboard. That may also factor in, but uh, overall, it, it seems to be a pretty decent motherboard. Thanks for checking out the video, folks. That's going to do it. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.